Okay, we're live. I think they heard. I think that came through, Josh, a little. A little, <laughs> oh, a little <laughs> right Just forehead. like when we record. <laughs> Class. Nice. Uh, so, hey, uh, if anyone's the channel, hello, we're Adventures in Lollygagging. We're playing Best Left Buried. If you're watching this later on on YouTube or some other VOD place, uh, thanks for, for thinking of us. Come check us out sometime uh, at twitch.tv slash lollygaggers. Uh, we, uh, we're going to do a one shot tonight, uh, with a game that we have played once before. Uh, we played this back, uh, in December and, uh, we played, uh, a little adventure dungeon called the Plum Wine Estates from A Doom to Speak, uh, which is like a kind of a series of these little one shot, one moment dungeons. Uh, and we are now going to be doing the same thing with, uh, what's called the Amalgas Cavern, um, this is all by Soul Muppet, so if you're interested in anything about Best Left Buried, the games that we're playing today, uh, you can go ahead and check them out, soulmuppet.co.uk. Uh, there might even be... Did I, am I, did I, did I uh, do this? Let's see. Nope, that's not how you spell it. BLB. There it is. I dropped a link in the chat. If you're in chat and you're curious, you can go check out all the wonderful stuff uh, that Best Left Buried has to offer. This is basically like a, a fantasy horror with some... Kind of weird other things that we're gonna uh, we're gonna show. Uh, there's two people here who have played this before. Ashley and Melissa have both played it, but the rest of them, uh, so Long and Derek or Josh, are completely new. Uh, and so I'll probably be like going over some things along the way. Pretty easy game to play. Pretty easy to die, and it's pretty easy to make a new character. So it's mm -hmm. all gonna be great. Our very first combat, our very first role in combat, resulted in a character <laughs> death. So that's how much fun it was. Or Logan. And it was Logan's character, oh, no. so it was like extra fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, let's just go around really quick. Uh, tell us uh, who you're playing. So like, who's your who's your first position character? If something happens to that character along the way, we'll find a way to get your second character to back up because everyone's got a backup just in case. Uh, just say say who you're playing. Like, what's your um, what's your what's your specific uh, archetype is, and what your failed career maybe was, uh, and then just what they look like or something like that. So we'll go by the overlay. Long, you are up first. I'm playing Leon. He's a dastard. His failed career is a storyteller. And what I look like, just some rugged dude. Um, okay. He's, he's got a, a long pink scarf that is twin-tailed to look like a cape. Okay. He's a rugged dude with a long pink scarf that's that looks like a cape. Okay. I can nice. visualize this perfectly. Uh, over to Ashley. Um, so I'm playing Sophie. Her failed career is being a nun. Um, <laughs> and her archetype is she's a believer. They're holy folk, um, often guided by gods. But something got mixed up for her along the way. And she has the ability to, of spirits of the beyond. So I can spend a point of grip and I can reanimate a corpse to serve me um, in combat. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfect for Ashley. Pretty blasphemous. Oh, yeah. D isn't that on brand? Yeah, and that's on brand. that's that's Very... generated randomly. So sure. But no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah everyone here generated their character characters randomly because that's fun, especially if we're just doing a one shot. Let's just make yeah. characters. Uh, but, uh, yeah. All right. Down to the bottom row. Derek, what are you playing? Uh, so my character's name is, uh, Horian. Um, I'm an outcast. And so, you know, I'm just not really about society, not really about people, I'm not a big fan of them. Um, interesting about this character is he's pretty brawny. So he used to be like a knight in the kingdom, um, and was his failed career as a tallyman. So, you know, when he wasn't out fighting battles and being, you know, a big buff badass, uh, he was keeping records of things, but the king and his, uh, his cabinet kind of undercut him and, uh, put some blame on some huge losses, on, on Hori. And so he uh, just, you know, kind of left the kingdom, lives out in the wilderness. Um, he looks like a really big buff knight, except, you know, his armor from living out in the woods is like, he still got the important bits that'll protect him, but it's just very worn, very like in disrepair. And he has a great sword. Um, and the hilt of the great sword is actually slightly curved from just how hard he hits people with it. Um, just swings it so hard and he bent the handle a little bit. So that's him. I like the confidence. I like that. I like how hard he hits it. That's good. That's good. I like it. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, let's go over to Melissa. Uh, so I am playing a dwarf. Um, and so the name that I rolled up for the dwarf is Catrick. 
Um, so interestingly, she is a very nerdy looking dwarf. Uh, she's got nothing in brawn, so that is not kind of what she is at all. Um, interestingly, though, her advancement is Radiant Blade. Um, so when she does make an attack, she can spend a point of grip to get an extra, to get upper hand and an extra D3 of damage. Um, her failed career was a messenger um, and her top um, stat is wit. Um, so I like to think that she, you know, used to have jobs to, you know, carry a, a message from point A to point B, um, but she's very interested in the world around her. And so she would always kind of want to talk to people or want to go, you know, investigate flora and fauna and all of those things. And uh, nobody wanted to pay her to uh, send, deliver messages anymore because she would take forever. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm picturing like a nerdy dwarf with like big old glasses <laughs> and such. <laughs> yep. So speaking of glasses, have you called the eye doctor yet? No. Okay. We've been bugging <laughs> Melissa for like six months to go to the eye doctor. And she's Melissa. Uh -oh. Yeah. We'll schedule an appointment together. I'm telling you. I got her an, I got her a gift certificate to Warby Parker. So now she has to do this <laughs> because otherwise she's wasting all that money. Uh, and then oh, making nice. his triumphant return is Josh. Josh actually played on one of the first streams we had, like one of the first two or three streams when we back when we were playing Shinobagami. Uh, oh, yeah. Which was fun, was cool. and I do want to get back to that at some point. So Josh is actually back. Ah. So, Josh, what are you playing? Uh, All right, and, this time... Yeah. I'm playing a man named Nathaniel. He used to be a fisherman. It's a failed career, so I like to imagine he still has like the classic fisherman cap. Still riding... Rocking that. Uh, he's a free blade. Uh, they're like a sword for hire kind of guy. But my dude's like a spell sword because he can like summon fire and lightning with his weapon strikes, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool to see that. Uh, I just use like a dagger and shield. Uh, it's hard for my guy to resist bribery and money because, I mean, it's like my job. I make Perfect. the money. All right, so this is good. Again, I, I do want to stress no one's been optimized here. Everyone's got random stuff. Uh, like some, some of that stuff works together. Some of that stuff doesn't. Uh, so before we start, let me give you a quick run through. Those of you who have never played this before, we have a cheat sheet uh, that you can take a look at if you want. But just to walk you through the basics of the character sheet, you've got three basic stats, brawn, wit, and will. Uh, brawn has to do whenever you're doing like strong physical stuff or stuff that relies on endurance or fortitude that's that's where brawn uh, applies uh, wit has to do with like cleverness or agility uh, and then will has to do with sort of like spirit uh, or charisma and stuff like that uh, now all of you should have a two in one of those a one in the other and then a zero in the third that's just how stats begin over time you can you can change that, but for, for starting stuff, that's where we're at. Uh, grip uh, is usually equal to your will plus four, uh, but grip can actually go up to 10. So you can have a max of 10, but your starting value is will plus four. Uh, now, grip has to do with like kind of keeping your, kind of keeping your senses in check, making sure that you're not freaking out. Uh, so like if you see like crazy monsters, you're not like, you're not like losing it and just running off into the darkness. So periodically you might be asked to make a grip check to see if you can handle it. Grip is also used as like a resource like mana. You spend grip to be able to activate certain abilities. Uh, you can also lose grip for other reasons as well. Uh, and if you, if you ever get to zero grip, if you ever reduce to zero grip, you're done. Like either you run off into the darkness never to be seen again, or you die of a heart attack. Now, if you start getting low on grip, uh, you can voluntarily choose to take what are called uh, kind of afflictions and things, consequences, to replenish that. So if you roll like a random affliction, and this is usually done, I think this is usually the outside of combat, unless you can double check me on that, uh, that will reset your grip to 10. Like it'll actually put your grip back up to 10. So part of this game is voluntarily choosing when to take things like injuries and the consequences and stuff. Now, some of the sometimes like we doesn't always have to be random. Sometimes we can like say like this makes sense in a particular situation, uh, and maybe you'll get a reward for it. But that's something to think about as you move forward. Um, vigor is basically health. Uh, it's your HP. Uh, if you're ever reduced to zero HP, we flip a coin. So for us, we're just going to roll a D100, and 
on if it's like if it's heads so if it's like one to 50 you uh you live if it's 51 to 100 you die uh so if it's one to 50 you just lay there unconscious until someone comes and try to save you or somebody else like a monster or something like that kills you uh armor is uh is is what you think it might be what a target has to roll to hit you so if you have an armor of eight for instance and i try to attack you with a monster i gotta roll an eight to be able to hit you uh initiative is something that you develop it's like when we do we get into combat we go into order etc um so if you're using the so if you're using the character sheet there's like you can see next to all your stats there's like a uh and an ao and stuff like that uh, in this game you have the ability to gain what's called the upper hand which means you get an extra dice uh, whenever you roll checks, uh, if you get against the odds, uh, you also get an extra dice. But the difference is, is that when you have the upper hand, you get the extra dice, you roll them, and then you drop the lowest before you calculate the, the success or fail. With against the odds, you roll the same pool of dice, but you drop the highest before you calculate. Everything in this game is d6s. Uh, usually it's it's a, it's like a two or three d. You usually roll like two or three, sometimes four d6s, depending on the type of check we're doing, whether it's combat or whether it's just like kind of an observation check or stuff like that. So you're always going to be rolling D6s. Most of that should be rollable from the character sheet that I put together. But if something doesn't work, you can always just roll it manually from one of the uh, the options that we have on Foundry. Uh, so any questions from the five of you before we get going? Sounds, sounds good. Okay. Um, that seems pretty simple. It is a pretty straightforward game. Uh, it is a tough game. Uh, we are going to be doing effectively a dungeon crawl tonight, just for funsies. Uh, I have a little map that we'll try to make use of, and I'll show it to the people who are watching. Uh, for you five, please don't run ahead like crazy and start moving your, your token all over the place. Like, let's talk about it when you move forward, because then, you know, that means stuff might get revealed, and you probably don't want certain things to be revealed until everyone's ready. Uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. So... You all are part, one way, sometimes temporarily, maybe some of you permanently, of a crypt digging crew. This is just sort of like common parlance for this game. Um, hey there, Sindar. Uh, thank you. It's a pineapple. It's a pineapple on my hat. Uh, so the players are part of a crypt digging crew, and you have been traveling around a for the last several days uh, this very lengthy and circuitous valley, looking to amash various treasures and valuables that you can haul back to the more civilized outposts to sell for coin, you know, to sell for actual coin. Um, and recently, a few days ago, a couple members of your crew came across a very uh, odd peddler uh, in one of these outposts that was selling a strange purple crystal of a surprising immense density. Uh, it seems that the peddler didn't fully realize just how valuable this crystal can be to wizards, and they were just sort of selling it as jewelry. Had, they were kind of stupidly just selling it as some generic trinket. Um, somebody in your crew uh, decided to purchase it and uh, kind of talk to him a little bit about it, and he says that he found that stone, that crystal, somewhere within this circuitous valley, uh, and he would be more than willing to, to sort of direct you to where he found it for a little bit extra coin, wink, wink, which you all gave him freely because, again, what you can now resell this crystal for is far more than you paid for as jewelry. Now, he described a uh, this, like, freshwater pond that was in the shadow of a rocky cliff wall. There were caves and, uh, like, kind of holes in the cliff water that periodically glowed, and occasionally he heard, like, rumblings some sort of weird sound that it was hard to describe. He uh, he would have searched inside, but such tasks are better suited for folks like yourselves, crypt diggers, because heaven knows what might be inside. And so your your entire crew, your entire company of crypt diggers has made camp in the valley, and they're sending out various small groups like yourselves to different corners of the valley and to different little nooks and crannies to try to find this place. And it's been several days, and you still haven't found it, except now... Today, right now, uh, you're sitting near this this little pond. Uh, it's a uh, it's underneath this this cliff face, and you can see there's numerous holes in the cliff wall, and there's at least one ground level entrance. And as you're all sitting there resting, getting your food, and and Hohorin is splashing face, you know, splashing water in his face uh, to to get rid of the sweat. 
uh, and the grime. Uh, you swear, Horian, that there is some sort of, when you dunked your head down in the water, there is a strange sound that was emitting from the water itself. This almost like a, like a hum or a buzz. Uh, and when you, when you dunk down in it, you can hear it again. Um, and you can see off again, off to the, off to the side, there's this, 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 this cave, but right here, when you, whenever you dunk your head into this pond, there is this buzz and that's where we start. So what do you do with that? Um, I guess I'll call over to the group. Um, does anybody hear any buzzing noises or is that just me? So one by one, all of you can come over. You kind of listen. Mm -hmm. And like when your head's not in the water, you can't really hear it. But once you like put your head down into the water or just rest your ear against the surface, you can you can definitely hear it. There's this muted, strange, kind of almost uh, almost eerie buzz or hum that's coming from it. it. Gives you the suggestion that there's something about this water, about this pond, uh, that is peculiar. Ah, it's the it's the most promising lead that your company has has come across in the last week that you've been scouring this crazy valley. Does it sound like white noise or something? It's like a constant buzzing. A little bit. A little bit. It's constant. There's like no it's not like a message, not like echoing or anything like that. It's just this constant buzz. It'll dim every now and then and then it'll kind of come back. Uh, but the pond itself is not very deep. You can see that it disappears, like, kind of underneath the rocks a bit. But it's only a couple, maybe about a foot, foot and a half deep at best. Uh, so it's really, or I would say two or two and a half feet at best deep. It's really not deep at all. Just enough to kind of get in. So you would imagine there's probably more water deeper underground or into that cliff wall somewhere. Do we see any purple glows in the water? You don't see any purple glows, no. Um, you can see on the above the cliff wall, there's a, a series of like little holes here and there. Some of them are small that maybe it's like a bird, a bird's nest or something can hide inside. Others are a little larger, um, but they're up a fairly sheer cliff face itself. And the cliff goes up incredibly high. Like it's, it's definitely casting a shadow over the area. Um, and then the only, there's only one place that's immediately noticeable. You can see off to your left. Uh, about 20 paces away from the pond. There is a an opening in the wall that's pretty close to the ground itself. Uh, it's not exactly close, but it's easy enough to hop up. But it's probably about four or five feet tall. If it's a pond, I'm, su I'm assuming the water's not flowing anywhere. Uh, yeah, you don't see any current or anything in here, no. It seems pretty still. Only the ripples of people constantly putting their head in and then taking their head out. And then putting their head in and then taking their head out. Yep. It's water. Uh, well, water never scared Nathaniel, so uh, kind of like dive in and swim around, see what I find. Yeah, so you, you can, it's more about like splashing in as opposed to diving in. But yeah, you start like stomping in and you realize. Uh, are you just human, or did you get, like, an archetype that was a dwarf or a small folk or anything? Uh, just human, okay. I believe. So, yeah, like, the water goes up to, at best, your knees. Uh, but you can see that you get to the edge of this, this cliff wall, and the water seems to travel underneath. You can feel your feet kind of go underneath. There's definitely, this pond is almost, like, spilling out. You would imagine somewhere inside... Uh, this cliff wall, there's probably a larger reservoir of water that's spilling out into this pond. Okay. I'll share that with everyone. Uh, we don't see another way inside, though. You just or see just that, that one wall? cliff, that one hole. Immediately, you can just notice that, yeah. Like, off uh, about 20 paces away, there's a, there's a kind of a cave opening in the wall, the cliff wall itself. I'm assuming the cave entrance eventually just becomes pitch black. Yeah, when you like go over there, like if you there, peer in, and you peek in, uh, yeah, it's probably about maybe five or six paces in, and then it kind of starts to curve and wind, and it becomes dark after that point. Yes. All right, I'll take out my uh, bullseye lantern um, and strike a tinderbox to light it. Okay. So, uh, and I presume you take a couple steps in at that point. 
Yeah, I'll uh, kind of look toward the group, hold the lantern up, and say, "Well, if you're coming, follow me." Okay. Sounds. I gotta be my my gruff outcast voice. Okay. So at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the map, and we'll see how well this goes. Sometimes doing dungeon crawls doesn't go well on the map, but I'm gonna try to see if this works. So, one by one, all of you start uh, climbing in to the uh, to this cave opening and you start peering through and it's a winding tunnel like it's definitely it, it, it's not something that you think is is commonly traversed uh it's twisting tight walls it's restricting your movement to the point where it's effectively single file and you find yourselves relying really really heavily on the torch light or the lamp or the lantern light of Hori, horian and whoever else has, might have one up um and it's so winding and circuitous that it's kind of hard to tell whether you're going up or down at times until finally you kind of you, you pour in, you put your foot down on the ground and you feel like almost a, a flattened surface where everything else has just been undulating. And not only that, but you hear the sound of dripping water. Like little bloop somewhere up ahead. Let's go toward the water and see if it makes the same sound. Oh, the buzzing. Yeah, let's go check it out. That's good. Right. Yeah, I'll use the lantern to like look around, see if like I'm assuming the dripping water is coming from stalactite or something. You look up and no, you don't actually see any stalactites or anything or stalagmites. You hold it up and the roof is right above you. It's like only a couple of feet. It's it's fairly. Oh, tight. okay. But you do notice it's starting to open up a little bit more. Onward we go. Okay. Now, you all have control of your, your tokens. I just will say, I will please ask you, don't go crazy with it and don't have like 50 people going in a thousand different directions. Just try to stick together and move them, you know, kind of conservatively as we go so we can kind of, I can easily keep up with this on the screen. That kind of thing. I, let's see. I'm not able to see my own token, actually. All right, hang on. I think my my field of view is based off of yeah. Let me check the person who's below. So permissions. That's me. See if that helps at all there. Yeah, I okay. think that I'm just gonna move up to chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So you should be able to. Okay. So you can you can go ahead and use the arrow keys and stuff to move around, or you can just drag and drop whatever you want to do. But again, it's a very tight tunnel, and you're not particularly able to to move too far. Let me zoom out a little bit. Give us a little bit more to work with. Uh, Sophie, do you have a, a torch or a lantern out? Uh, I can. I can have a torch out. I don't need it um, because I have tunnel vision. So I can stay in the back. Okay. Because I can stay behind us. All right. So as you move up, Horian, you can actually see that right in front of you, um, right in front of you, like the as the as there's a little bit of a decline, like a like a ramp that just sort of goes down a bit, you can see that it widens a bit, the ceiling gets a bit tall, and uh, you can also see that there's some, some sort of greenish water, uh, brackish water up in front of you. Uh, and it seems to, the tunnel seems to split a little bit, uh, but in both ways you can see the water extending in either direction. Does it look like the same water from the outside that we saw? It's a little dirtier uh, from what you can tell. It's kind of harder to see. It might just be the light is not as clear in here, but it's not easy to see how how deep it is. Uh, but uh, as you get a little closer to it, you can see it's, it doesn't seem too deep immediately, but as you start kind of maybe poking a sword or a staff a little bit further, you can see that it does progressively get deeper and deeper um, a few feet out. And how opaque or clear is the water? Like, can I see the bottom eventually, or does it's, it just become it's, cloudy? It's brackish. It's very hard to actually okay. see anything. Yeah. Do I see any footsteps near the shore where of any other creature or person? Uh, go ahead and roll an observation check. Now, an observation check is just two d6s, and you have to hit a nine. Oh, all right. So you can do that. Okay. Oh, well, I hit an eight. <laughs> Uh, you, uh, you do not notice any footsteps or anything like that. Um, you, 
You do see a few things floating in the water, however. Um, kind of just a few feet out. Uh, it's hard to tell exactly which one of these... Uh, I'm going to move you up just a little bit. Uh, which one of these directions it went, whether it went kind of to your right or to your left, but you can see that there's there's something in the water floating around maybe two or three different lumps of something. Um, real quick, with an observation, it's just two straight D6, you don't add will or yeah, it's just two modifiers? Straight. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's really just to, that's just that's just to get extra stuff. So like, Oh, okay. In this game, like you don't really roll for like stuff that you can kind of obviously see like it's just it's there like you see it no problem it's just if there's like something super hidden or secret that a normal person like wouldn't necessarily look at unless they were kind of lucky uh that's gotcha. sort of what it is okay so uh, but yeah you you look and there's there's these two really tight ways forward each of which seems to be underwater somewhat um other people can do stuff as well you're welcome to to move up and do whatever you want to do yeah, I'll just turn to the group and, you know, shine the lantern at them and say, well, we got two ways to go. Uh, I don't care which way we go. Some, does someone want to help me out? We're going to get wet, by the way. Is there... <laughs> Is there a wider tunnel? Uh, no, they're both pretty tight. Yeah, I mean, they're both like single file tight. Uh, can I investigate these lumps of whatever? Yeah, go ahead and move your token there. Um, you get a little, you get a little bit into the water, and you you reach out and you grab something, and you pick it up, and it's and you realize like at, in a start that it's a chunk of flesh. Uh, I need you to now roll a grip check. Uh, Gross. So, a grip check is basically a will test. Uh, so, and it's a target of nine. So, on your character sheet, Josh, you can, if you look next to your, next to your will, or you can see the the will line. Just click on the word will, and it'll roll it for you. Cool. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Fourteen. I mean, it's just a bucket. It's take just, a it, bite out of it. That's just whatever. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you pick it up, and it's just a chunk of flesh. And you pick up another chunk of flesh. You can see like soggy tissue, um, remnants of some kind of bone or, or cartilage. Um, it's not like an identifiable piece. You don't see like a hand or a foot or you don't see like a tail. It's just like a, a hunk of, of unident you know, unidentifiable yeah. flesh. Uh, that's probably been in the water for a little bit of time. Looks like it was not on or like cut off. Uh, yeah, right. definitely. This, this, there's no clean cuts. Like this is definitely rough. Like there's a rough cut to it. All right. Well, careful out there, guys. Uh, Some not too friendly might be in the waters. Should probably stick together. And there's about three of these. You pick them up, kind of throw them down onto the dry land, and it's just all, they're all kind of gross. And it's the same thing in each one, different sizes, irregular shapes. Um, okay. What next? And by the way, when you roll and you pass a grip check, you get an experience, by the way. So you can go ahead and take an experience there, Josh. I think it takes oh. 8 XP before you can start buying stuff. And it is possible Thanks. to potentially buy stuff during uh, during the actual game. Very nice. Okay. So you've got these two ways to go. Does anybody want to try to do any other type of investigation, or do you want to just pick a way and go? Did that chunk of flesh come from a certain tunnel, or was it just laying there? It was just sort of like floating right here. It's hard to discern which way it came. What if you threw it back in or down a tunnel? Yeah, you don't see any clear, like, if you just plop it back, because there's so many ripples in the water, you can't make a clear current, at least not a strong one, just things things are kind of more casually moving based upon the momentum from when they were placed in the water. Okay. Let's see if we could, <clears throat> we could, uh, you know, see if there's a breadcrumb trail or I guess a meat crumb trail in this case uh, down one of the tunnels. If one doesn't have anything, we can turn around and check the other one. Wait, if we put our head down into this water, do we hear the vibrations? Sorry, say that again? I was just answering Adam. Adam, they're making grip tests too because he picked up a piece of meat, like a piece of unidentified chunk of like flesh from the ground. No, That'd be hilarious. 
I was saying if we could hear the vibrations if we checked our heads in this water. Uh, I'll let you go. Ahead. Okay, so if you dunk your head in the water, go ahead and roll um, an observation test. And I'll say, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and roll that, and I'll give you like a, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll reduce the difficulty from the normal nine to like a, a seven. Okay. You, um, when you dunk your head into the water, first of all, the water itself feels kind of strange. Right? You can feel that there's, um, it's al it's almost like it, it kind of tingles against your skin in a way that that the pond didn't. The pond seemed like normal water. Like this, you put your head in and you feel like this weird, almost almost uncomfortable, but not not so much that like you recoil, but it's just one of those things where you just start to feel a little more uncomfortable the longer that water kind of stays in contact uh, with your skin. Um, you hear kind of competing sounds that are muted when you put your head underneath the, the, the water. You can f kind of hear a kind of a like a pulsing almost as you start to listen a little bit more carefully you realize it's almost like a humming. Uh, you think you might even hear something else but it's it, it's it's hard to, it's hard to, to get and then you also hear and you can kind of tell in this case that there's like a some kind of strange moaning that's coming from the left of the two tunnels, like a. Okay. So we're going right. <laughs> There's a noise coming from the left. Do you want to check that out? That's probably what left these meat chunks. So I'm against it, but <laughs> if you'd like, I ain't stopping. Which well, means more of the cut for me. Considering this this cave is uh, these tunnels are a uh, single file, I don't uh and uh, I whoever's going to be leading the pack might be getting a whole lot of something they didn't bargain for, so I'm I'm also against going to the source of the sound. All right, I'm not an experienced crypt crawler, so you guys make good case here. Let's avoid it. <laughs> This is where you guys turn around, and thanks for joining the stream, everybody. <laughs> have a nice night. Like, Catch you like, next what week. was our job again? I, I just realized like I have job. long on the screen twice. Why has no one mentioned heck? this to me? <laughs> That's hilarious. Why has no one nice. mentioned this? That's so funny. All right, so cover by air why I fixed this for Josh. That's so funny. So would you say that this water has an acidic uh, tone to it since it was feeling funny against your face? Yeah, this is not good for my skin. If my face starts falling off, guys. <laughs> What's the pH of the uh, water? Can yeah, can we pull out a chemistry test kit? Do any of you have a chemistry test kit? Uh, That's a I have manacles. question. I can... None of you have a chemistry test kit. Yes, <laughs> I do, Jeffrey. You liar. Yeah, that's what how you magic? reconstitute the corpses. I just want to point out that anywhere you go in this in this dungeon is going to have danger. So we might as well rip the yeah, cord. Lead way, the which, way, which Derek. Way do you want to go? But the fir but the other way that doesn't have the sounds could have gear so that we could fight it better. That's not yeah. how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've. It's like classic. Go, right? <laughs> we used to have a rule, and I'm not saying you should do this, but we used to have a rule whenever we used to play on whenever I used to play on uh, on defenders on the DCC game. We would just always go left. We didn't care. Didn't matter what we heard. We just always went left. It absolved ourselves of decision making. We're just like every time we went left. Not saying you need to do that, but it was pretty funny. Do we always go left, Josh, or oh, do we always go sure. right? Well, I was thinking we just go right. Yeah, and stay yeah. Right. I'm gonna. I want to go right. As the vigorous one of the Forever. group with the lantern, I'm gonna go right. Lantern. Locked in. Leave I'm just yeah. at the back watching our backs the whole time. I'm just like, do do do, anytime now. Okay. Look, watch. These two like things are gonna meet together, and it's not gonna matter <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. laughs> so you step forward, and you can see uh, Horian as you as you move a little bit further in to like like down the tunnel a bit. You can see that it starts to open up, but um, you see some kind of slight rippling in the water as you move forward um, but otherwise it's kind of a larger like vestibule of water like but again you still have about about three to four feet between the surface of the water and the ceiling but you can you can realize that the water is almost getting down to about almost up to your waist 
Uh, but yeah, it opens uh, up a little bit up ahead. One of us is going to have to pick up the scrawny one in the back. Oh, <laughs> this is getting deep. Yeah, uh, is, is uh, uh, Catrack still good, or are they going to need to be lifted here soon? Sophie, are you relatively? Yeah, I'm like a, a tall chick. I'll just... I got two go brawn. A... Yeah, just friend. like, yeah. Just hold on to my shoulders and like doggy paddle kind of thing. <laughs> there we go. Doggy paddle. Before I got into the water, because mind you, I'm in a full nun regalia. So I like reach down, I grab the bottom of my skirts, and I do the thing where you kind of grab the back of your skirts and pull it up and like tie it into your waist like a big old diaper kind of thing. So my virtue is uh, protected. Uh, and then I get into the water and I look back at Catrick and I'm like, all right, let's go. Right. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of like pull your arms up on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm also ripped. I'm just that buff nun. Okay. It makes sense. Well, as you start moving forward, or and you hear something around the corner uh, in the water, and you can see that the ground itself, like not the ground, excuse me, the, the surface of the water itself begins to sort of move as if something's coming. And moments, like a second or two later, you can see suddenly moving across uh, the water and kind of deeper into the the larger vestibule area you hear you see a figure close in on you uh they have this they have they look on the surface like when you first look at them you see the contours it almost like look, looks like a like a humanoid and they start to move up a little bit closer and you realize there's like this feral sensibility to them there's these horrible giant welts like on their face on their neck you can see that there's this green white pus that's like melting down the side of their cheek out from this huge, almost like a goiter in their neck, and they're just and they're moving right through the water in the direction of you, uh, and I need at this point, everyone the roll for initiative as this thing is coming directly at you and as it's about to swing uh, so go ahead and hit that a weird Hold on looking a fish Hang on one second. Nope. Just kidding. Oh, I was reading the cheat sheet, cheat sheet and it says roll 1d3, and I'm trying to, like, I'm like, I know there's a d4, but. There should be a button on your. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, once you said that, I looked over and realized I'm stupid. Okay. Leon, would you really roll the two? I gotta enter yours manually. It didn't add my width. Uh, is it supposed to? 1d3 plus. Yeah, it should be plus your wit. Yours is fine. Oh, Dorian. sorry. Do you have Mine any wit? Mine should be a three. Yep, two. So it should be okay. four. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with my sheet. It's just not really working that well. Uh, just call out to me what you have. So, uh, Orion, what's your total? Uh, my total is four. Okay. Uh, Cat track, what's your total? Three. Okay. Uh, Leon, what's your total? Four. Uh, Nathaniel? your total uh i'm still trying to find the button uh it should be right under your will armor. so you're under your derive the derive stack category oh i see one okay plus your wit so the three yep. total okay. <laughs> and sophie what's your total three New. all right then yeah my sheet's all messed up i don't know what's going on why it's not working Weird. Whatever. We'll make do. Like, all my info's gone again. Uh, okay. So... Let me roll mine. Alright, so... Four and one. One second. Okay, so here we go. So as this thing starts moving in, you can hear behind you, Catrack and Sophie. You hear kind of a, a splashing around in water as stumbling from the other uh, tunnel. You can see it's the same Ooh. type of creature. Hmm. This, as it gets close to you, you realize is is a humanoid. Their hair has been kind of 
ripped out in sort of different patches. You can see a handful of strands left and right. Uh, you can see that their nose is kind of crooked and exploded all at the same time. You can see that there's like a giant hole where the bridge is. One of the eye sockets is drooped down in some way. The chin is shifted off to the side. Huge welts appear uh, and small tumors over the body as they come running at the two of you. Uh, and they did roll a five, so they get to go first. I'll 50 50 to see who actually gets attacked. So one to three, it'll be cat track. Let's go ahead and get rid of that person. Done. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be one to three cat track, four to six Sophie. So it's going to go ahead and it's going to swing at cat track. So. Man, what is going on with my foundry right now? Um, okay, so now, first time we've been in combat. So the way combat works is you roll 3d6s uh, to hit. Uh, you're trying to hit the other person's armor. Usually it's between like a 7 and a 10 or so. Uh, and so what's your what's your armor, Catrack? Uh, I have... Sorry, I was just pulling this cheat sheet. Um, 9. Okay. So since it's a 9, what uh, I'll be doing is I'll be rolling 3d6s, and then I'll be adding whatever kind of stat I have. So these guys, you can see that they're carrying like something in the ground, like like they can see them in the water like a big club or something so i'm going to be adding my brawn to this attack so i'll be rolling 2d6 uh plus yeah so roll 2d6 plus looks like one okay uh and that's a 10 so Ooh. that 10 is successful uh actually i roll another six too sorry so now what i do is i just i decide like which two do i want to use so you roll you roll a grouping of three dice and then you decide which two do you want to use to attack, and then your third die is how much damage you do. So I rolled a six, a three, and a one, and I got to hit uh, an eight, you said? Nine. A nine. So I can hit a nine with the six and the three, which I do, uh, and then I do one damage to you. So you take one damage. And that comes from the vigor, so then my yep. vigor grows from six to five. All right. And then next up, it's going to be Hordia. So just to confirm, the the thing in the room with me has seen taken notice of me, right? And yeah, it's aggressively flashing, splashing through the water in your direction, like it's coming for you. All right, I'll, you hear uh, screams behind you as Catrack and Sophie have shouted that there's something behind as well. Oh no, no, no! I've got tunnel vision right now, so I like <clears throat> um, grab the great sword off my back and charge in at this ugly bastard okay. if I'm able to. And um, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll take a swipe at it. Okay. Yeah. So then, roll your three d sixes. Right. Uh, and add your, and you can go ahead and, and just roll three d sixes, and we can figure it out like that. Yeah. All right. So these, so you've got a six, a five, and a two. Um, I'll tell you that these have an armor of six, so you can easily hit them with a five and a two, uh, and adding your brawn, and then you can use your six for damage. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you use two of the dice to hit it, then the six carries over for damage. Does the does the brawn go for hitting or for damage? Uh, brawn goes for hitting. Damage is just a flat damage with the third dice. Okay, so then it would be max damage then. Yeah. And so since it's yeah. a crit, uh, I actually have to roll on a crit table. Or on an injury okay. table. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Oh, thanks, Adam. Uh, so I just did that. Um it's against the odds on its neck. So you smack it right in the face, and so it's going to have difficulty kind of seeing for a moment as it stumbles around. Not a particularly difficult uh, injury. Some of them are pretty brutal. But six damage is quite a bit. However, as you swing into them, uh, you can see that all sorts of this green-white pus just sort of explodes from the place where you hit. They stumble for a moment, but they seem undeterred and Despite a pretty hard and strong hit, they are still standing. Uh, and so we move on, and it's going to be Leon next. Real quick, is the stuff coming out of them the same color as the liquid we're waiting in? Uh, no, it's more. This one's more kind of pale, pussy color oh. with a tint of green. You're just in okay. kind of standard greenish water, like dark green water. Uh, all right, so next up, it's going to be Leon. Okay, I'll squeeze my way back. It's the one that flanked us. Okay, so I'm behind. Okay. I'll pull up my scimitar and strike this one. Okay. 
go for it. And don't forget that some of you might have abilities, like your advancements or your archetype abilities that could help the combat. I don't know all the stuff that you have, so there's always things to consider. How do you roll the damn or attack again? You just roll three d6s. Oh, okay. A nine. Okay, so then what you do with damage is you look at you, you, what you do with this is you look at the different dice. You have a one, a six, and a two, and you know that you need to hit a six to hit these things because that's the, the target number that you're looking for. So then you add up two dice, two of those three dice, plus uh, what kind of weapon are you using? Scimitar with his wit. Which is wit. So add your wit. So what's your wit total? Like what do you have for wit? A two. So I think totals ten. Okay, so you could. Yeah, it's not. You don't look at the total again. You just take two dice, two of the three dice. You roll a one, a six, and a two. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to add two of those together in your wit, and that needs to hit six. And then the third die that you didn't use is what you do for damage. So in this case, you would have to use the six and like the one in your two, in your two for wit to be able to do like like that hits a nine. Oh, I see. And, and then damage is two. Your two is your two is left over. Make sense? Yeah, and then have a minus one damage on the scimitar. Uh, okay. Because it's damage one. Okay, got it. All right. That is your turn. Uh, next up is Catrak. Okay, so because I have Radiant Blade, I can do upper hand on attacks if I spend a grip. So okay. I'm going to drop my grip down one. Um, and so then I'm going to roll 46. So upper hand is just like you roll an extra die and you and since she has upper hand, she gets to first drop the lowest one she rolled, which was a two in this case. And then let's see, you just tell me which two you gotta hit a six. Which two do you okay. want to use? So I've got a I'm um, using a throwing knife, which is a wit weapon, which I've got two. So I could do the two and the three. Uh you drop the two because it's the lowest. Oh, sorry. So then I'll take the three and the five? Yeah. And then the six plus a d3. Okay. Um, how do I roll a d3? You can roll a d6 and divide by two, or just type slash r space d3. Uh, one. Okay. So then my damage is a seven. All right. Plus it's a crit. So I'm going to go ahead and roll on the injury table for this one. Uh, it's going to lose a point of will. All right. Uh, pill. So it was a total of seven damage, you said? Yeah. All right, so it's good. And this thing is still moving around. Still alive. Ooh. Still functional. Uh, Nathaniel, your turn. All right. Um, is there anything to move up to it? Or are you just kind of saying? You, know, you got to move in an action basically every turn, so you can move towards it. Yeah, okay. Technically, we have zones, but the zones aren't really mattering because it's such close, con uh, close combat here. Gotcha. I'll go. Uh... Go up to the one that Ho Orion's on. Mm -hmm. uh, and quick question is, uh, if I use lightning, is this water like conductive? I don't know, man. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, we'll we to know. Out. All right. Yeah, I have a dagger in my width zero, but if I use my uh, fire and lightning thing, Turns into a will attack, which is my best. So I'll just spend a grip, and we'll try the lightning. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Do it. Atta boy. I've got oh. nine vigor for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, so now this is uh, always upper hand, and deals him. Okay. Okay, so you're using, it's upper handed. So 46. So you're rolling 46. Uh, this is your first time using Foundry. In the bottom right, you can see that there's different pictures of the different dice so you the square is the d6 perfect so click on it okay yeah Ooh, that's not, not that's a good roll good. you drop one of, you drop the lowest so we drop one of the ones and so then you make a pool for me you have a four three and a one to work with and whatever your i uh, need to hit a six stat is six. that you're adding so it looks like you can do so four one plus my two for mm -hmm. the hit and three for damage that or i could do right. three and one uh, plus two and four for damage Three and one plus two for yeah, that's right. So four damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this thing, as you as you ha hack into it, you can see that the skin around where it's like kind of pussing 
it's it's almost moving as if there's something kind of kind of crawling around underneath it. You're not sure if it's like actual blood or the pus itself is moving underneath, but it's almost like the skin itself is crawling. And as you hack into it with this this little surge of magical and you know kind of fire and lightning, you can see the skin kind of burn away. And whereas some of the other hits that were landing on this thing started to almost stitch up in a way, this thing seems to sort of sort of seared it in a way that the skin's not restitching. Uh, okay, okay. And then Sophie, it's your turn. Magical damage, I'm yes. guessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I'm just gonna hit it with okay. my scimitar. Okay, and I would say since, like, at this point all of you are kind of surrounding it a bit, uh, I'll go ahead and give you the upper hand on this. So roll four d6? Yeah, that's fine. Nice. The situation calls for it. All right. So we drop the lowest, which is a one. Everything else is a five. Uh, yep. So what's your modifier? Uh. Oh God. Uh, for the scimitar. Yeah. What uh, like what's your wit? Uh, my wit is zero. Okay. So you just do five damage. Yep. All right. And you can see that this thing is is kind of getting cut down. You can see that all sorts of like pus and goo is starting to pour into the the actual water itself. You can see some of the skin is kind of sliding around it as if it's not quite sticking, um, but it's still standing somehow. It's still despite this bombardment. Uh, so then the one up front that kind of started all this gets to go next. Um, it's going to. We'll just randomly pick one to three. It'll be Josh. It's five, uh, so it's gonna instead attack Hori. Um, it's gonna come at you again, pulling pulling this club, like this really generic-looking club, up out of the water, and it's going to swing, and it's gonna smash down on you. Uh, so this is gonna be six. Okay. So, uh, what's your what's your armor, uh, Horian? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. S- yeah. So I believe it's a nine because I have basic armor, and it says it increases by plus one. By one. Yeah. yeah. So you start at eight, you go to nine. Okay. So it's got to got to hit nine. Uh, I have a plus two on my roll from my brawn, so I can do I can do a five, a two, and then add my two bonus for nine. And then I would be able to do four damage to Horian. So four damage to Horian. Okay. And it comes from your vigor. And that is the end of this round. Um, in the back, those of you who are on the one that's in, in, the, in the, the back of this particular um, fight, uh, you can see that the, its skin is starting to kind of knit together in some way. As it's uh, Some of the damage that you have done to it has has managed to restitch, but not much. Like, you can definitely tell that it's still very, very hurt. Uh, But it also seems a little bit, like, kind of lifeless and unsure of, like, what, in fact, it's doing. Uh, And then we go to the top of the round, and it is its turn again. Uh, Now that there's three of you back here, I'll do another kind of random... This is just thrashing around without any real strategy. So, one to two, Cat... Uh, three to four, Sophie. Uh, I rolled a five. It's gonna be Leon. Sorry, I was on GM roll at the time. I saw that. Uh, so it's five. So it's on Leon. So it's gonna turn to Leon, and it's going to swing uh, again. Same thing it's been doing before. Ooh, I just rolled a six, a that four, and a good. six. Guess who Ooh. just got crit? Yes. Guess who's dead? <laughs> <laughs> Cracked out a little bit here and there. So as this, with its in its almost like its dying, thrashing, you know, kind of like final throes of its life, it swings violently backwards towards Leon after attacking Katrak, uh, and that's gonna do uh, eight. Uh, no, it's gonna do six damage, and then it's going to be a critical injury. Uh, so your critical injury. How much figure do you have? Six. Oh, you got lucky. No effect. You dodged the injury. 
You take six damage. But it dodged a hit, so I collapse into the water. Okay, now roll a d100. One to 50, you're okay. 51 to 100, you're dead. Okay, you are okay. You just, it just right across the head, your head slams against the rock wall. You splash down into the water. Sophie, Katrak, you see him fall, but at the very least, you think he's he's kind of still thrashing around a little bit in the water and alive, uh, but he seems like you can see a big pool of blood beneath the foam around his head. Uh, Horian, your turn. All right, uh, I'm going to take out my manacles uh, because that hit on me was uh, pretty damn decent from Club Boy, and I want to try to manacle him so he can't swing that club around anymore. I like it. Uh, go ahead and... Uh, We'll say make a wit check, uh, and we'll say it, we'll say six is your target number. Same if it same as its armor class. So roll a roll a wit check. Got a seven. And yes. you as it's tr- maybe it's turning around after having just been hit by Nathaniel and kind of looking down in its arm, where where Nathaniel managed to hack hack through it with its lightning, and you clamp down one manacle on one of its arms, and you reach down and clamp it on the other, and now it's thrashing around with its two hands. Its club falls to the ground. Air, you know, it kind of sinks to the below the water, uh, and that'll be your turn. Uh, Leon, <laughs> uh, Katrick. Um, and this thing's looking pretty. Uh... Oh yeah, this thing's roughed up. Like this thing, it, it, like it's there's so many wounds and sores on it. Uh, many, most of which seem to have been applied by you all, but some that likely were there prior. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna hop. Um, can I hop down and still have my head above water where we are? Or do I have we'll to say kind of... barely, just barely your head stays above water. Like, okay. like literally your head's above water. Eh, okay. I'm trying to use a long bow. All right. So, well, you, you can always step back away, uh, if you want, but, uh, I believe you do actually have to make an escape. Um, so basically the way it works is if you're in the same zone as an enemy, um, and you want to move away from uh, an enemy that's in that same zone, you got to make mm-hmm. a witch check. Uh, and if you fail, they get an opportunity attack. Yeah. So, All right. Can I try to do that and take uh, Leon with me? Uh, I'm going to say no on that. Okay, I'm trying to do fine. a little too much, I think. Okay, that's fine. All right, so I'm doing a wit. I got an eight. Uh, you got an eight. That's good uh, on your witch check, and so you kind of stumble backwards away. Um, what do you want to do? You said you wanted to try to, to sort of fire a quick shot at it. Yeah, so I'll do longbow. Um, so this will be just a three. Oh, I don't think that's going to be great. Let me see here. Nine is still um, good. These things have a have an AC of six, target number of six. Super easy to hit. They're slow and lumbering, but they just they just don't seem to feel pain the way you all do. Yeah, so this is a wit, so that's a two. So I've got to use the six to get there. So the six and the one plus my two, which will leave two for damage. Two total damage? Okay. It's still yeah. kicking. Yeah. Takes a licking. And Steep keeps on ticking something. Keeps it. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, so then it's going to come over to Nathaniel. This thing is right. now flashing like confused that it has these manacles on it what do you want to do <laughs> uh can i use his club against him uh sure start of your turn we'll say move action quickly grab it out of the ground as it's or out of the water as it starts to fall and it's kind of a slimy Ooh. as you feel it, it's like metal like you can it's like it's got a weird oh, okay. metal you're not sure what it is it's just a big hunk of metal that you pick up out of the ground just hoping it'll be more effective than my little dagger that I got. Okay. Uh, so I'll just brawn. Okay. I'll hoist that up and bring it down on his skull. Wait, is there like a planking in this or no? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. It's it's situational. Like in this in this case, I'm gonna give you the upper hand anyway because uh because of the manacle confusion that's happening now. So you can go ahead and roll it at, at upper hand. Oh, okay. So four d six. Mm-hmm. And you would drop the lowest before you do your calculation. And I have one brawn. Okay, so you drop that one, and 
you deal with the other ones. And tell me what your damage is. Um, I think you can use the five for damage. Yeah, I'll use the five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Does that add my brawn or no? The brawn goes onto the hit. The hit goes onto the hit. Okay. Okay. Uh, and this thing. As you smash down on it, as it's staring at these manacles, uh, confused, you just get behind it and crush it over the back of its own head. Its head explodes outward like a buckshot, just throwing particles and particulates of bone, of skull fragments, pus, blood, all over Horian, who just gets drenched in it now. And then it collapses into the ground itself. Sorry about that, Horian. Uh, There's water to wash off right here. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no problem. Uh, can I get my manacles back from it? Uh, yeah, when you're, yeah, you'll be able, to, you'll be getting. It. It's not like it's floating away or anything. So, okay, your turn. Um, can I use lay on hands on um, Leon? Sure, absolutely. So I can spend an action and a point of grip to restore an ally's vigor by the equal amount to a D3 plus my will, which is one. Okay. So one, D3. So four. I can I restored your vigor by four. So you reach down, oh. hand glows a bit as it reaches down into the water, and then like a surge of energy courses through Leon's veins and, <gasps> and you breathe in this this disgusting water that's in your mouth now like as you <laughs> whatever the heck it might Oops. be all right uh grip check is good with 11 were you supposed to roll a grip check every time you do it no i i didn't didn't mean to uh okay uh then uh, uh unfortunately we start up and it's it's turn <laughs> so it's going to 50 50 who it goes after since cat track has stepped away uh, it'll 50-50 between Sophie and Leon. So one to three, it'll be Sophie. Uh, and it is a five. So Leon, <laughs> Leon. will lunge down at Leon and attempt to swing at it once more. Um, this, is, uh, this one's a plus one. It's just sitting here like, how dare you not stay dead when I kill you? <laughs> it's like, stay in, stay down. Uh, what's your armor, Leon? Nine. Nine. Uh, okay, I can hit it. I can hit you. Six, a two, mm. and a one equals nine. The damage um, will be a one, though. Because I roll a six, a two, and a one. So you take one point of damage. Okay. okay. Uh, and then we come back around to... Uh, who is this? Horian. I'm assuming that I wouldn't be able to move over to this other creature that's still alive because of the distance and the crowding of the tunnel. Yeah, I would say that you can move over there, but you probably couldn't get into position to strike this round. Okay. Um, then in that case, so, so just to confirm, the thing in our room with me and Nathaniel is dead. It's oh not yeah, its head like, exploded onto you. Just making sure. Okay. Then in that case, I'll just get my manacles and uh, I don't really have any. I don't have any range stuff, so okay. I'll just trust my comrades to take care of it. Okay. Good shine your lantern in its eyes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Leon, you are back from the near death. What do you do? Oh, get this thing off me. I'll just swing at it while we're here. Okay. Presuming you stand back up, take a swing. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go for the crit here. Uh, That's going to be enough to just straight up kill it. So uh, what kind of weapon are you using? How does does it die? A scimitar. So after fumbling for being unconscious, I stand up and just strike it straight, straight through its chest. Pretty much like a skewer. Yeah, like a curved scimitar blade going hey, in. He just thrusts in. And Oof. Is... All right. So, uh, you can go ahead and break out of combat now as you have you look around and you don't see any more of these things. And they're both laying, you know, floating up on the water a bit. Uh, one of them effectively headless. The other one has a giant hole now in its, in its torso where the scimitar was, was thrust through. Um, so. Is there any like identifying marks that we could see if like this is like some of these have like a tattoo or anything like that that we could? Uh, yeah, you take a look and you can see that they're. I mean, they're wearing clothing. Like they're they're like it's run down and old and um, it's definitely worn. Uh, 
but you can see just sort of generic rough spun wool of some kind. So we're not, we can't recognize who these people might have been. No, I mean, you're not from the okay. area. Like, this Got isn't it. like your, your, your travelers passing through. Um, and there's nothing really signifying who they might be. It's just generic clothing. No, okay. No uniform or anything like that, if that's what you're asking. All uh, right, then. I guess we should keep, uh, keep moving. You also, um, in addition to, like, the club... So you have, like, this metal club there, Nathaniel. You can just treat it as mm-hmm. a club, brawn weapon. Um, but it, it doesn't have, like, a good, clear handle. It actually kind of hurts your hand whenever you whenever you hold it. But you know you can use it. But at the end of oh. it, there's this... It's the, it's, it's, it, Despite the fact that it's metal, there's, like, a... There's sort of, like, a, a fluidity to it. Like, it, it actually bends somewhat. It's got kind of got like a whipping to it. It's a very strange metal that you probably have never never come across before. This is not, I mean, like metal, when it sits in water, rusts. It doesn't do this. So. Um, and those of you, when you're looking around the one, uh, so Catrack and Sophie and Leon, you can find, like, tucked away in what looked like some kind of hip sack there's this cloth wrap pack of like salted fish. You pull it out and you smell it. And it's still probably good. But you would probably want to clean it off a bit, but it That's I mean, reassuring. It's a dried kind of bit of uh, of salted fish. Um, food is important in this game. Does food restore vigor? Uh, you have to rest, which takes time, uh, and it's also how much you do, uh, how much you heal up is dependent upon how safe the uh, area is where you rest. So it's kind of sort of like GM oh. call. And like, so if you rested right now, you guys wouldn't get anything because like you have no idea what's going on yet. So, um, but if you were to go outside and rest, which is totally unfun, uh, that would be better. I'll walk up to. Um, oh, hold on. I have to scroll up in the log. Oh, Sophie. I'll walk up to Sophie because I've got him sporting a pretty good bruise on my head where I got clubbed and say, uh, uh, sister, I don't suppose you have something that could uh, take care of this this wound I sustained. And I call her sister because of the course of the clothing she's wearing. Yeah, well, uh, not, not really. We didn't really plan for this. To be fair, you <laughs> did plan for this. This is This is your job. <laughs> this is what you guys do. It's a failed career, Jeffrey. No, that's your you nunnery. Nun? Your nun was a failed career. That's why you're doing crypt digging because you failed at nunning. Yeah, and I'm pretty bad to begin with. <laughs> um, I thought I had bandages, but I don't know for sure because my whole sheet cleared out. Oh, okay. So, could I, yes? Can I say yes? That's not how it really works, though. What was your starting? Um, um, I was gonna say if you scroll up in the in the yeah. log, you might be able to see what you rolled. You can do. It's not what I. You don't need. Rolled. You don't need bandages. I, you did... need medicine. Okay, I don't have medicine. I. Oh. Oh, okay. I... I thought the lay on hands thing you could just do whenever. I only have so much grip. Oh, don't it costs forget. grip. Oh, gotcha. And, okay. But don't forget, you can always do it, and then you can intentionally take a consequence, an affliction, roll a random affliction, and you get ten grip. You get you reset your grip to ten. That's the, okay, that's I'm gonna heal you, okay. and then I'm gonna get. Awesome. I want an affliction. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, so oh I'm gonna my. do my one d three. I love it. So you get three three vigor back. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then are are you're just a human, right? Just a. I'm just a human. Okay. Um. Right. I don't know if being a believer affects it at all or not. No, being small folk dwarf elven affects which table you roll on, so you just roll on this one. Okay. Oh my gosh. I left it on private GM, but I swear to you, this is the one you... this I rolled Maneater. Okay. So just will, copy and paste it, yeah. Yeah, I will... Oh god, I can't believe that that's the one I rolled. So is she just about to dip her face like Bob for apples, except it's going to be uh, Bob for dead villagers? So there's villagers. different kinds of <laughs> afflictions. There's special afflictions which have like their own individual rules. Growing afflictions are things where over time when you face particular triggers, 
you would have to roll uh, like a special grip check, like a will check. And if you fail it, then like your your affliction applies, like something happens. Okay. And so you are a man eater. So I'll go ahead and copy the, and it kind of makes sense. <laughs> just, just, can, is there any way to just drag it to my sheet? Yes, there is. Uh, okay. So I will get you up in a second, but that's it right there if you want to read it while I get your sheets <laughs> fixed. Characters who are man eaters develop a taste for human or demi-human flesh and blood. If they try to rest without consuming the flesh of a human or demi-human, they must take make a growing will check. If they fail, they do not regenerate vigor or grip after the rest. Obviously, cannibals are hunted down and killed by other members of society, so the character should usually act to hide this insanity from their party. No one wants their crypt-digging companions to eat their corpses. Yeah, so you're going to make a slide of hand check to pick up some chunks of meat that were uh, picked up and thrown onto the shore. I mean, sitting right there in front of you. Yes. Right well, there. did I get... I got 10 grip, correct, yes, Jeff? You, yes, when you voluntarily take an affliction like this, you get reset to 10. Um, I am going to use that sack that stayed dry with the anchovies and be like... Well, I better uh, bury these later, uh, just for their souls. And I start putting chunks of, <laughs> of meat inside the bags. Excellent, I love it. I'm I'm a fighter, not a thinker, and, so and I, that I'm makes like, perfect sense. I'm like praying as I'm doing it, like, oh, oh, fathers, I will bring you to the light, and some nonsense. <laughs> Katrick is like, that's not how that works. I, but this is why you failed at being a nun. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. mean. Um, the other thing I should say, but you can't, so that's, I think that's out of combat stuff. In combat, you can always take an injury, but that only resets your grip to five. So just a couple little odds and ends like that that I sometimes forget. And the last thing that I forgot is the concept of exertion. Uh, so exertion basically lets you reroll. Uh, so if you want to exert yourself when you're attempting a check, uh, including combat stuff, you can spend one grip to re-roll a die. So after after a check is rolled, but before I like narrate the results of it, like what actually happens, you can say I want to use exertion. And then for every grip point that you spend, you can re-roll one of the die that's just been rolled. This could be something that you do after your own check, or even could be something to do after something I roll with like a monster or an NPC or something. So that's another way of spending grip to do things. All right. So, uh, Nathaniel, you're you're the you're off by yourself right now, buddy. And you, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just checking this guy's pockets for money. Yeah, you're going. Yeah, wait, I thought I was still with him. You moved up to get healed from Sophie. Remember? Oh yeah, that's true. That's true. I didn't move my thing. Okay. So Nathaniel, you hear the sounds of humming. Not in the water, but you can hear it like. Try to be quiet so I can listen closer. Something like that. The heck? They just keep saying that over and over. Yeah, and it's and it's down the tunnel that you are at the the mouth of. All right, I'm gonna crack a torch and. Uh, Kind of go grab everyone. Did I hear the hear a voice and the the humming? Yeah, after gathering Once our wits, all we'll continue down. Okay. I will lead the pack as the meat of the group. Okay. So, uh, Leon, Le or Horian and Nathaniel are probably towards the front. Um, as you as you kind of move down further. Um, you can see as the the cave opens up a bit and you kind of start to view you can view that up ahead there's the first thing you notice is that there's this heavy like pink hue that's just saturating all these different shapes which you think at first might be boulders or rocks of some kind but as you look a little bit more closely you realize like there's like a, a piece of of wood that's kind of propped up on like a stack of crates, see what looks like a like a like a tent maybe. Um, you swear you you see a hammock that is like attached to like the rock wall of the cave, connecting then to somewhere you know like to something else on the ground. 
and there's this massive purple crystal that's just giving out this glow that's saturating all of it. And around it, you can see there's a group of, of people that are just holding their hands up and kind of swaying. As you look at this from, from a little bit, you can also see that the, they seem to be mostly on dry ground as well. Uh, would it be possible to get the crystal back out of the cave? Or it's like way too big? Uh, we gotta get a little closer, but I'm, I'm just gonna move him up a little bit so the camera can see some of this. But yeah. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see you can see on the map, you should be able to see it on the map now that up ahead, this, this crystal is just kind of giving off this, this purplish light. And these people are just dressed in like regular clothes or just regular, regular clothes. for... Uh, from this okay. distance, you're not that far away, and it is giving off a decent amount of light. You can tell that they are, like, they don't seem to be shaped similar to the things that you just fought. Like, these seem like normal folk in terms of, like, there's no extra tumors growing or a third arm growing out of their ear or anything like that. Um, have any of them taken notice of this? Uh, doesn't seem so. You're, I'm still giving you credit for like staying in the kind of the cave tunnel and like peeking out, noticing that this broadly opens up. It's just like this wide open expanse. It looks like a, almost like a, an underground river extends off to the east a bit, but it's like this little shanty town to the south of you inside of this cave. There's a small like island of, of dry ground off to your left, so to the east a bit as well. Um, and you can see that it, periodically there's these very smaller bits of crystal, these purple crystals that are like floating in the air in some cases, or just floating on the water. Kind of just all right. I take some of those. Concerned. I'm gonna, yeah. So I'm gonna like murmur. So I have Nathaniel next to me, and is that Leon behind me? I'm gonna murmur to both of them, like, follow my lead. These look like uh, they're worshiping whatever this boulder is and um i'll put my great sword back on my back and so you said they're like humming and like holding their hands up yeah they're, they're, they're definitely seem to be surrounding this like crystal monolith and there's okay i'm gonna i'm gonna also hold my hands up and like slowly wade toward them and also like try and hum along with them and see if uh okay yeah see what happens you start moving up and they like one or two of them like kind of look over towards you briefly. They see you holding your your arms up. They look at you. They have kind of a, a they, they don't look like they've like these other creatures that you fought along the way. But at the same time, there's sort of like a a vacuousness in their um like in their face a bit like like they're not fully there like their eyes are kind of distant in some way um you can see that there's there's like scarring on their face and most notably it looks like they have no ears like their ears have been cut and they're just sort of folded inward these scars and so they're just no, no. they look at you and they give you the, like this reverent nod. A few of them kind of recoil away from you, actually. They kind of get a little scared. Like, they kind of step away. But none of them seem to make any aggressive moves towards you. I will follow okay. Orion and then... Yeah, I'll we'll follow his lead. Get in with that group. Okay. As they walk up, I guess I'll talk to the one person on my characters left next to the capital H and I'll see if they even respond and I'll say so you feel it too or something like that you know trying to like acknowledge the humming or the of the water or the okay yeah so as all of you begin to pour out of this tunnel uh, you can see that there's there's quite a few uh, maybe 10 12 but a few of them start to they look at you ah, oh, oh. And they just, some of them just start to panic and just bolt and run in all sorts of different directions. Some of them start splashing away into the water. Uh, one of them kind of just, just 
turns and runs and like starts to cower uh, across the way where like that little island of, of dry uh, dryness is. A few of them you can see are just just cowering by like this grouping of mushrooms in the corner. Um, one of them pushes right past Sophie and Catrack and just runs down the tunnel uh, in a different direction. Um, Catrack, as they they push past you, you like you lose sight of them for a moment, and then seconds later you hear. <laughs> you peek back down the tunnel that you just came from. And you see that they're no longer there, but mm-hmm. so there's this giant pool, like red pool of that's blossoming in the water itself, and the water's kind of fla- you know, thrashing around a bit. Uh, yeah. Go so ahead. I'm gonna kind of continue to face behind me, um, but push Sophie, basically, and just say, Let, "Let's get with the others. There's something behind us." Okay. And like push her back across. All right. You all are responsible for controlling your tokens, so if you're moving up, you got to move them. Otherwise, I'm assuming that's where you're at. Um, so Leon, or uh, Horian, excuse me, you, you step up and you say you feel it too. And they look at you and they, there's no recognition that they heard anything because their ears are missing. They, they, there's just, they're just sort of folded in the skin and they just kind of look at you and they look back at this giant purple monolith that's got these rusted chains that seem to be strapping it down to the ground and he just returns a little solemn nod and then closes his eyes and lets the majesty of this monolith wash over him. And this thing is looks like our mark. That's what we've been looking for. You're looking, I mean, you're basically looking for purple crystals and you can see that there's a massive one here, but there's a bunch of others that now that you look in different directions around the room, you can see there's Everything from like the size of a fist to the size of like a watermelon to this massive thing right in front of you. All of this would be worthwhile in some way. The one that's chained to the ground, does it seem to show any signs of like wanting to levitate or like ascend? Yeah. When you look down, you can definitely tell that the, the, the change seem to be taut and some of the crystals do seem to be levitating in the air. Would be feasible to get the big crystal out the way we came, or it's too big for that. Uh, it would take some time, but you think you could do it. It would take it would take a decent bit of time. You don't know how they would react to it, uh, but in terms of just the size of the tunnel, you probably could. You're not sure how heavy these things are, but you know that they're incredibly dense. Uh, but doesn't you don't know? But you you know that the size is okay. Yeah, I wanted to try and like get some smaller crystals while we're doing our. Uh, praising okay. thing to this crystal like discreetly. So yeah, there's one that's right closed. by Catrick and or by myself and Sophie. Okay. Um so you said you were trying to do it discreetly, Nathaniel, is that correct? Yeah, just like when people are looking away, like kinda maybe fade away. Roll wit check. Wit. Okay. You S- reach down six. Yeah, you reach down to grab one. And as you stand up with it in your hands, you can see that there's another one of these villagers that has just slowly been moving around and stares at you. And they go, oh. 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 And then the others start opening their eyes. Oh. And the one that looked at you starts running towards the water to the east. Uh, <laughs> I'll just put it in my bag then. Okay, he fair ran enough. away. All right. I go, okay. Uh, I think maybe they ran to get somebody to deal with us. I'll move up to the big one in the center. Maybe observe it a little closer. Touch okay. it if I get the chance. So you take a look at it, and it's it's definitely you're you're certain it's the same material like that's 100 percent certain it it gives off like a, a little bit of warmth strangely enough um and it's very very smooth in some places but also kind of fractured uh, in others you start looking around and you realize that it's kind of similar in other places for a wit check Okay. 
Okay, you're, um, yeah, you look at them, and, and it's hard to piece together exactly what you're looking at. It's 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 beyond anything you, you fully understand, but you can feel a warmth and a glow coming off of it, and a kind of a, and you, and you can kind of feel that part of your face that had the tingling on it begin to tingle again. It, it's all connected somehow, but it's beyond you to kind of piece together what that might be as of yet, anyway. Hmm. Uh, can I try to um, get some of this into my bag? The one that's right by Sophia. Okay. So you you move up to do that, and another one of the villagers. You want to try to do it? Do you want to try to do it discreetly? Um. Yeah, because I did see the freak out that happened. A minute ago. Okay. Um, so roll roll a, a, wit, a wit check. Need a nine to pass. Seven. Okay. Don't forget, by the way, part of this game is about figuring out ways to gain the upper hand on checks. And remember that if you have multiple stacks of upper hand, like maybe from someone assisting you, maybe from mm -hmm. equipment, maybe from some sort of really just clever idea, if you get three upper hands and you don't have any against the odds against you, it's it's trivial. You don't have to roll. It's an automatic success. So the the kind of the idea is like try to be creative. It does not necessarily like some sometimes with like what's in your inventory, but also just like just what you can think of, like cool ideas. So like hypothetically in that type of situation. Like, Sophie could have just been, like, standing in front of you, trying to block the vision, mm -hmm. upper mm -hmm. hand. You know what I mean? Those types of things. Um, so you go to do so, uh, and you try to pick it up, and Sophie kind of gets over just a little too late, doesn't quite block the full vision, and then one of them comes running towards you, and... No! No! And just starts like swiping your hand. Not attacking you, just sort of swiping it out of your hands. And then once it falls to the ground, it seems satisfied. And then what does it do? So I'll just sort of stare at it. It'll, once it drops to the ground. It'll start moving away. Can I like mouth like why? Like make it really exaggerated? Because I know they can't hear, but maybe they can read my lips or something. It turns to the, to the larger purple monolith, and it says, The Amugas provides... Do not take that which is not yours. Okay. Can I ask, provides what? And they kind of perk your head at you in this sort of strange way. And it kind of starts rummaging through your, it reaches out and starts to rummage through your pack. Do you, have, do you let it? Um, it's just a human, sure. by the way. It's just, I, I'm using the word it, yeah. which is totally wrong. It's just a human. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. They just rummage through your stuff, and they pull in, they pull out, like, some chunk of food, and they just start eating it, <laughs> and they walk away. Because <laughs> they don't look particularly well. They look a little strange. Or... Like, they're they're scarred in their face, and they, they're, all, they're all missing ears. Do we see ears anywhere around the camp, like, hanging on, like, a clothesline above a fire or something? No, you look around. There's a lot of, like run down equipment tools bed rolls that type of thing uh there's some food like some dried fish that doesn't look particularly appetizing but probably would do the business some mushrooms that have been chopped up here and there but everything's kind of broken and run down it's very like lean to shanty town something like, this has all been hastily thrown together um i'm gonna move over in this direction mm -hmm. i'll like kind of sidle, like, you know, still holding my hands up and humming, but I want to get a better look over in this direction. So I think I could probably get about there without okay. looking too suspicious. So I'll just sort of move you the direction. Like, so as you move down, you realize like there is a cave wall here and there's like two of them like to the south that are just kind of huddling a bit in the shadows by like just a, 
just a little alcove, and they look at you, and you get closer, like... <gasps> These ones also have no ears? Yeah, you haven't seen anybody with ears yet. I'm just wondering why some are afraid and some aren't. I'll, if they're looking at me, I'll just kind of put my hands up and do like a shake my head from side to side and shrug my shoulders as like, what? See if they give any. And they just... Go. Go, you anger. Almogast with... With your presence... You will go down its wrath. Okay, I'm gonna walk back to the group then and just say like, you know, I think I think you've all worked this out yourselves, but uh, these guys worship this thing. Um, don't know if it's a cult per se, but uh, yeah, I don't. They seem to either be afraid or. Uh, they just don't want us interfering, so I don't know. How do you guys want to do this? Well, let's see if they'll let us have it real quick. I'll just turn to the guy next to me. I point at the crystal in myself. Can I have this? They look and they try to read your lips a bit. No, no, this, this is Omungast. It will, it will not let you take it. No. Uh, this thing's making the buzzing, right? Uh, or we haven't no. found that yet. <laughs> In fact, oh. there's no, there's no kind of humming sound coming off of this thing. They were humming, but you don't hear that kind of white noise sound from this. No. Uh, if I can pull on the chain, like how much force? Is going upwards. Is it pretty hard to keep down? Yeah, it does seem like it. Yeah, it does seem like it wants to move up a bit. How is it chained down? Is it like pikes? Yeah, it's like something like they they hammered some spikes into the ground and like it's through the chains itself. What do you guys think of letting this thing free? See what happens. I was thinking of busting it up a bit. Be a little easier to carry. Um, if we let it, if we let it free, uh, we might want to tie some rope around it so that we can pull it with us or pull it back down. Uh, otherwise, who knows if this thing will just shoot off into uh, the ceiling? Right. So, how refined is this thing? Is it like jagged or is it like smooth sort of thing? Uh, it's there's smooth stalks, but then it's like fractured in other places. So it definitely seems like it's been broken apart in a way. It's it's crystalline. So like you see, it's like a crystal, like a large chunk of crystal that has been shattered in certain places. It's a little unwieldy. So I took out my shovel and started hacking at it, get some chunks apart. Was that a thing? Depends. And you know this is a very dense material, so you're not sure what that's going to do to your shovel. Uh, shovel might be better on on these rusted chains, possibly. Mm. Uh, but you would imagine the shovel probably wouldn't do much against the the crystals themselves. Is the right, club I got like similar substance? I'm sorry, say that again. Is the club that I got off that mm. uh, water dude the same? No, crystal? yours oh. yours is clearly metal. Like like you just it just kind of has a weird kind of a weird density to it. Like there's a it's. It's it's almost got like um. I mean it's 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 malleable in a way that normally only metal that's that's like superheated is malleable. Uh, and okay. you you can't identify exactly what kind of metal it is. Like it's like this isn't steel, this isn't iron, this isn't gold or tin. It's very unclear what this might be. Now at this point, you guys hear coming from the east um, in the distance, because you can see that there's darkness to the east. You can see that the water continues eastward. You can see that the, the surface of that river uh, where a couple minutes ago some of these, these people had splashed into to run away. You can see that it kind of settled 
and now once more it's getting disrupted and you hear like the sound you hear something coming some sort of loud coming from the east I'm gonna hide in the tent and see what's coming our way okay uh, so uh, is anybody else doing anything I wanted to ask the uh, person that was in front of me um, who are the blue people and they look at you the blue people are the icons that I put <laughs> okay it's just to be able to distinguish between the two they're not blue themselves um, but, so and I'll just kind of gesture because they had all of like the pustules and stuff on them okay uh, they kind of shake their head unbelievers how did they get like that? Kind of shake their heads. Lack of faith. Mm. And then I'm going to remind the group that there was something that sounded like it killed the one that ran down that tunnel. Unbeliever. So you guys <laughs> start to see something emerging to the east moving up through the water, splashing a bit, coming in your direction. You can see that there's a few people that are on this side, like on your side of the river, that have fallen down to their knees. And as, like, whatever this is begins to emerge, you can see that it is massive. You can see that it is not something that is the shape itself is like constantly in fluid movement uh, the form is almost kind of impossible to discern it's got these jet black eyes that occasionally like reflect and flicker the purple glow of the crystal um, and as it gets close you you hear this growing sound of this high pitched white noise that just uh, starts to eat away at your ears a bit um, and it begins to just splash in your direction um, so as it gets closer and closer I need Leon and Nathaniel to roll grip checks uh, what's that based on? Uh, Will Eleven. Okay. So I have a at your ability. Okay. I, if I make grip checks due to monster environment, it's at against odds. So is this a monster environment? This sort of this is a monster, and it's a monster ability that's doing this. So it would be against the odds. So roll um. Uh, what's it called? Roll three d six and drop the highest. Okay. Or just roll against the odds next to grip. Yeah, yeah I lost, for it lost the five, so it comes out as five. Okay. You uh, you feel an intense pain just begin to end, like the echo and thrash between your, your ears. As it just kind of begins to to hum and pierce this, this horrible sound, uh, you are now deafened. Um, you gain an XP there. Uh, Nathaniel, but you, uh, Leon, are deafened. You can no longer, and like it suddenly, you just, you just can't. You think you, you think it's gone. You think you can't hear it anymore. As this thing comes, comes marching toward, it sees the two of you huddled around this this monolithic structure, oh, and. Dear this peculiar head that just emerges suddenly from between all these different tentacles uh, one of which you can see is holding what looks like the fractured body of one of the villagers um, others are just sitting there kind of almost almost pro and prostrate in front of them um, but this thing roars um, and I guess that's Roll for initiative. At the very least, Leon oh. and Nathaniel have to. I wanted to like lift up my club to the crystal and if it took a step closer, I'd try and hit it. Okay. Yeah, we can just roll. You hold it up, and it t and it's just 
<laughs> and like the white noise just get worse and worse as it starts to paddle in, in your direction, like kind of rolling over itself. As you're not sure if it has arms or legs or if it's just a series of tentacles mixed together. Uh, so let me go ahead and hang on. Before you roll really quick, let me go ahead and put you into initiative, actually. I always forget that part, that I gotta put you into the encounter before you roll initiative. So, let's see, I think I got everybody. All right, so, who am I missing? I am missing Sophie, who's in, and Catrack, who is also in. Okay, go ahead, do and, I go ahead and roll want, initiative. Do I have to roll initiative? Uh, if you're going to try to do anything at all, even whether it's not attacking, then yeah, you're going to have to do an initiative. It's just going to be structured time. Okay. Like, it doesn't mean, just because you're rolling initiative doesn't mean you have to fight or anything like that. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and try to roll it now. I'm hoping it'll Where? actually work this time. It's supposed to uh, I don't even have a button. Yeah, you do. It's the word initiative on the underneath the derived uh, column of stats. There's like Vigor, Armor, Initiative, XP. One. Yeah, it's just not things are, I gotta go back and check my my stuff. Let's just call it out. Uh, uh, Horian, what do you got? I have a four. Okay. Uh, and then Katrak, what do you got? Uh, one second. Four. Right. Then it's going to be Leon. What do you got? Five. Nathaniel. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Again. <laughs> uh, Sophie. One. Okay. Then let me see. This you don't have any wits either, Ashley? Nothing. I'm buff. Uh, so, first up, Leon, you've just had your ears deafened. You can't hear anything other than this buzzing. Um, but you're up. What would you like to do? This thing is m moving towards you, the two of you. Um, and you can see that all of the villagers are getting out of its way, and they don't seem to be uh, giving much care. Even the fact that there's like one or two villagers that are just coiled up in this tentacle or that tentacle, like fractured and just hanging there limply, clearly dead. Uh, I'll look over at Nathaniel. He said he was about to club this thing? Yeah. The crystal, not the monster. <laughs> okay. I'll hack at the chains holding those down then. Okay. So you hack at the chains. Um, you're, again, your head's still... Is it still buzzing around you? Um, all right. And that is that is it? That's all you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Horian, what do you want to do? You're in your tent. You're not sure if it's seen you yet. You're... I'm, yeah, I, I'm assuming I can at least see out, though, from like the flaps oh, yeah. in the tent. I would tent. imagine you can see it. You're not sure if it's seen you. Right. Would I be able to ready my bear trap and throw it um, like right? If the thing's making a beeline toward Leon slash Nathaniel, could I crank the bear trap into a set position and like slide it along the ground right there? Okay. Yeah, I would uh, probably require a wit check when the time comes to do that. Okay. Okay. Well, isn't it my... Because well, so... you're readying to do it, right? Well, yeah, I was just going to do it now. So oh, you're that, doing it I'm now. I thought, a, when you said ready, advances. I was thinking like D&D. &D oh, sorry. Yeah, like re ready the bear trap and slide it out so that when it gets up to Leon, it'll yeah. hit it. Roll That's what a, I was thinking. Roll a wit check to try to throw it into the position that you want to position. You know, because these uh, bear traps are kind of big and bulky. So let's see if you can. Got a nine. It. Nine. That is exactly what you need. Uh, and so hey. right in front of it, this giant bear trap will open up. Um, okay. Uh, then it'll be Catrax's turn. So I want to... This may go poorly, but I want to take that uh, purple stone that was in front of me. Okay. And I want to chuck it at it. Okay. I'm so, working on a theory. Okay. You throw Testing it at a it. Theory. Roll a wit check to see if you can hit it. 
right. Trying to do damage to it. I, I'm just. I'm wondering if there's a reason why they're worshiping this purple thing. Okay. Nine. Yeah. Um, it hits it for sure. Uh, what happens? Does it just make it mad, or does it do anything cool? Uh, we'll say you do. We'll call it two damage. Uh, no, actually, yeah, it's called two damage. Um, it harmlessly bounces off to it, off of it, and falls Damn into it. the water. All right. All right. Um, next up, it's going to be its turn. Um, it will move forward, uh, step on the trap. Um, now, this thing is enormous. Not by step, I mean it'll roll over with one of its tentacles. I'm looking up to see if there's actually anything in the equipment item. If it has instructions, or do we just make it up? Okay. I think what I'm going to have it do... It's First of all, it's going to go off. This thing's going to go off easy peasy, no problem. Um, I'll say roll 2d... Just we're making it up as we go. Roll 2d6s and take the higher one, and that's how much damage you do. So five damage. So this thing's gonna cool. just chomp down on one of its tentacles, and you hear it roar in pain. Now it's still rolling around. Its tentacles are again still rolling around, but you see that that bear trap remains chomped on one of the tentacles. So as this thing's just sort of coursing through this bear trap, but it's like Rrr! so you definitely do damage. But it's gonna move and just crush over top of all of these different things. At this point, it's in the same zone as everybody but Cat Track. Um, I need everybody, with the exception of Cat Track, to go ahead and make that same test that I asked, um, as the others did when it comes to that that noise. So go ahead and make your your grip check. I'd like to use my True Grit ability. Okay. What does that do? Uh, oh, if I could post it in the chat. I don't know if you can or not. You can. Oh, okay. It. Uh, then it just says um, uh, the first time each adventuring day and outcast would lose grip due to from monster or environment they ignore it and don't lose a point okay uh, looking at this I see a fail from Sophie and Leon both of you are deafened as like you just continue to rack your like as, as everything just washes over your head your head just feels so much pain uh, Nathaniel you quickly cover your ears and kind of clutch them so you can't hear anything and uh, you cannot gain more than one experience from passing this, so you've already got your one oh, from last time. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, then I, what it's going to do next is it's up next to all of you. Thank you, Gabe. Posture check. Um, it's going to... Um, it's going to stare over at Cat Track, and you can see that these completely pitch black glassy eyes just sort of stare at you, and as these these different tentacles roll around it, its head just begins to stick up a bit underneath the tentacles. And you just mm -hmm. find yourself kind of getting a little dizzy and lost. Roll a grip check. Okay, I get upper hand Against because the are... odds, uh, actually, so those two will cancel out. Okay. Real quick, uh, if you use an ability, do you not get XP from surviving a grip check? Uh, you have to pass the grip check, so you have to roll it and gotcha. pass the XP. I got you. Okay, uh, that's a fail. Yes. Uh, so you are going to suffer one D3 worth of grip. You suffer three. You lose three grip. Uh, okay, I've got one left. Okay, just remember that in combat, you can always take an injury uh, to reset to five. Uh, I'll do that. Okay. So we'll go ahead and... So you lose grip when you make a check or how's that work so when you do when you when you're talking about a grip uh, like a specifically a grip check so you're shaken um if you pass and you gain an experience point if you fail you lose one point of grip so i would have lost twice two grip yeah yeah because you failed twice so yeah uh so this is your injury you can reset mm -hmm. to five cat track okay um lose a point of will Makes sense. Uh, that puts me to zero. Well, that's okay. That doesn't kill you. That's reducing okay. your attributes to zero doesn't kill you. It's just your your grip and your vigor. Okay. okay. Um. All right. So that's going to be its turn. Um. But that white noise is just 
deafening to all of those of you around it. Only Nathaniel and Horian seem to be able to withstand it. And Nathaniel, it is your turn. My turn? Yeah. All right, so he did not take my threat against this crystal, so I'm just going to swing at him. Okay. Right. Uh, is the club two-handed? Uh, yes, yeah, the club's going to be two-handed. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll still use it. Um... Do I need to move up to him, or I'm in? You're you're in the same zone as him, so that's fine. Okay. Where you're at, it's fine. So this I'm gonna thing's use huge. My lightning strike on this guy. Okay. Uh, with my fire and lightning strange, I will use three points of grip. Uh, so we'll do upper hand brawn attack. Okay. Okay. I'll tell yeah, you that that's... the target number that you need is an eight. I'll use the six for damage. Okay. So it's and since gonna... I used three grip, it triples it. So Holy uh, crap. 18 damage. <laughs> you... Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> it had eighteen health. I can post it. No, oh, I, I, shit. Eighteen health you. after the after the bear trap? Yes, after the bear trap. Oh my. Oh my God. You take wow. the club and you bury it right into it's now it's it like it kind of emerged its head between all of these 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 tentacles that were writhing around it and you bury it right into this chest that has sort of emerged at the base of its neck and it just collapsed inward and you just hear <gasps> dang there's probably like a huge thunder I'm just imagining the home rut <laughs> I'm imagining the home rut bat sound from Smash Bros yeah so you you have the, the the metal club stuck in it and you're struggling to pull it out and as you do pull it out you hear that it kind of gets higher and higher pitched, and then suddenly the creature explodes. Uh, everybody but Catrek needs to make a wit check right now. Even me hiding in the tent. Even you, you're in the zone. Sorry, <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you upper hand on it though. I'll say that since you do have like a little bit of like kind of cover there. Okay. You need a nine on this, everybody. Got the nine. Oof. Me uh, out. That's not good. So, and you got your nine there. It looks like Corey, and you're good. Uh, so if you failed, go ahead and take one point of damage as I rolled minimum damage. There you go. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> as this thing explodes and all of this like kind of greenish blue blood just erupts all over the place, covers that giant crystal monolith, covers you all, all of the villagers. <laughs> they... <laughs> Are, are they Darkest fall to now. the ground ah, no. weeping hysterically uh, some of them run away uh, and you can hear again catch right there's a there's like a thrashing somewhere down the the tunnel and you hear oh and then you don't hear them anymore all right um <laughs> I'll emerge from the tent and shake Nathaniel's hand and say hell of a swing <laughs> Now let's yeah, get I've this crystal and get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Did Catrick's... you learn that from fishing? <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem with fishing. That was too rough on him. <laughs> Jeez. Nothing left to what sell. The heck? Yeah. Oh my god. That is an absolutely crazy wow. amount of damage. Just one did. shot a, a boss. I'm yeah, going to start yeah. taking a swing at the uh, pikes on the ground. My great sword to break the chains. Okay. Oh, but first I'm gonna tie the rope around the crystal in case it decides to fly to the stratosphere. Okay, so you, this is this takes a, a little time. While you're doing it, you do hear, like, coming a little bit to the east, like down the water. You can see ripples in the water. You do hear like a coming somewhere like deeper to the sort of northeast a bit. Um, well, uh, is the you, northeast where we came from? No, you kind of came more north northwest. This is more kind of literally northeast. Oh, okay. You haven't yet gone in that we, direction. We we might actually want to leave that uh, situated where it is until we clear things out a little bit because it will be hard to possibly fight other things while trying to hold on to that because there's something killing things the way we came, and there's noises from that way. All right, let me give him a bear trap. Reset it. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. 
So, I mean, it's up to you guys. Like, it's, you could easily just take this. I mean, like, you could take this. Yeah. Leave. Take it and go. And you can always come back. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was Horian's uh, thought process. Yeah. yeah. But, but he's also... something the way we came, too, though, right? Like, it's not just something farther down. That there's Might be yeah, more but... of those pustrel dudes. You're yeah, we'll sure the... just how big these caverns are. Because when you look off to the east, like, it's very dark in here. And, like, it extends significantly. You know that this is a this is a pretty big find. There could be more to find in here, but it's just a question of like how much do you do you push forward to see what else you might discover and what else you might be able to loot, or are you just satisfied with getting this massive monolith that you can haul up out of here? Am I permadeath, or is that just because that creature? What do you mean permit? Oh, permit deafened? No, after yeah. after some time, it does like your hearing does come back. Okay. At a certain point, though, I think your head pops. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know when, though, but I know it happens. At some point. I'll at least affix the rope around the monolith and then just kind of stare at the group expectantly because I'm just the brawn. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm focused on getting this thing out of here. Okay. So we need to take a side and yeah. catch I think and between... I will get the other one. Okay. Yeah, the one that you threw at the creature. So you start moving this and carrying it out. Uh, and when you pass through the tunnels on your way back out, um, one of the rooms that wasn't as tight, like where, where both Horian and Nathaniel fought, um, fought one of those like the strange kind of mutated, melting-looking humans, you do see like just a leg floating in the water. It's just there floating, and it's got that same kind of generic rough-spun wool type clothing that you've seen elsewhere you see a tiny ripple a little bit in the water and you know that this is a little bit deeper of an area but as all of you are here nothing nothing seems to to do anything like you don't you don't get addressed like you get bumped with a with a big you know a big uh, a big leg that's just floating there but otherwise yeah it just doesn't really I'm sure exactly what the hell happened back here um second as you're starting to like pour around to the east or excuse me to the west and kind of get out of the water you can hear and you look kind of down the tunnel that you didn't take and you can see that there's like these three kind of strange looking villagers that seem to be moving around messing with something in the water but you you make a note of it you're like, we got this big thing. Let's just get this out of here first, and then we'll take it later. So I think we're going to go ahead and say that you get out, get it back to camp. And if we want to return to this uh, this cavern later, we totally can. Um, but we're going to call it there because I because Long's got to go at 6, which is 6 right now for us. So we're going to call it there and stop. Um, oh my gosh, nice. nobody died. Oh, dude, I'm so proud of myself. I used both <laughs> of the items that I got nice. from my roll. I used the bear trap and the nice. manacle. I was going to try and manacle this thing, but then Josh eviscerated it. <laughs> yeah, what yeah was, Josh did some the, shit. Of that ability, that was the Josh? advancement. A fire and lightning strange. Oh I can God. use either fire or lightning element into my strike. Uh, it always has upper hand, deals damage equal to the damage die multiplied by the cost and the grip. The character That's spent, and I spent three, so and rolled a six. Go and you rolled a six. I mean, eighteen points of damage is like that's, that's uh... that, that made, dude. That was amazing. That yeah. To put it in perspective, Ooh. when we did Plum Wine Estates, like first roll dead, like yeah. I think that fight, yeah. I killed two people, and then I killed another person a little bit later. So like it went fast, and I mean the and the creature they were fighting that killed them wasn't actually particularly tough. Like this thing mm -hmm. is pretty tough. Like there's one or two things it didn't even get a chance to do. I was Careful to Josh, die. you've got a you've got a crosshair on your back now if you yeah. come back to this. <laughs> I sure do. I mean he does, but for different reasons. Uh so anyway, that's best left buried. I you know, simple simple little dungeon crawl. You guys, you know, there's like half the dungeon maybe you got through. There's a little bit more. There's a couple mm -hmm. other things here and there. Um you could have gone either way, different things you might have discovered. I won't say everything in case we do come back to it. I don't know if we will, because it's like, you did the big thing. You fought this big monster that yeah. was guarding yeah. this, this village. There's other reasons maybe to come back here, but like, uh, but yeah, this is. Yeah, I, th this is I was thinking maybe that the. 
purple monolith like was like protecting them from this thing and that's why they were like, yeah i figured it. that's why you threw it at the at the hydra or whatever oh, that sure, was yeah no yeah. it's yeah and it's not uh i wish I, I i totally forgot to take a picture take a screenshot of the actual creature itself if it's josh really weird looking man if Sorry. Josh had not crit it, I was going to use on my turn, I was going to use the fat. I was going to say, is this tent made of like fabric? And I was going to cover its eyes because it used some kind of like gaze mm -hmm. That's on one of its uh, cat tracks. One of its Yeah, so I was going to like. One of it, yeah. yeah, I would have covered its eyes and used like a brawn test to hold. Oh, man, that was fun. That was there's, cool. there's other abilities too that it could potentially use. Um, and who's to say that's not, that's, that's the only one in here? Who knows? Uh, I don't know. You guys, you guys. If it didn't explode, I wanted to raise it. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I have a pet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it only lasts while I'm in combat, so I was going to kill everybody else there. So, uh, so yeah, that's a little taste of best best left buried. It was only a two hour thing, so we I didn't have like a ton. We weren't going to be doing a ton of stuff anyway, but like that's what we had. Um, that was so that. cool. Uh, we have like there's more. I want to play more of this. Like uh, there's, I want to do. There's one that's called Beneath the Missing Sea that I want to do, which is like more of a mini campaign. I say mini because when we say campaign, like we've done a year and a half long campaigns. This thing's not a year and a half. This is probably like maybe five, six, seven sessions, something like that, depending upon how long. So I kind of want to pull that out at some point. Um, there's a few others because like there's a lot of cool little things in this game that I really like. Um, I really like the way damage is calculated. I like that whole 3D6 and et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get it again. We'll get this out again maybe next week or within the coming weeks we'll do another one. So there's a lot of these little mini dungeons I can just grab and throw and play. Like that's what mm -hmm. I've done with these. But then there's others that are like actual campaigns or hex crawls with a little bit more not robust storylines necessarily, but like there's more to it than just dungeon crawl, right? But for a two hour, this is this is this is pretty nice. So but I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's cool. Best I was really nervous about the cultists when I was like, all right, what's going to happen if I try to pretend to be one of them? Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty uh, yeah. brave. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's so Horian right there. There's a couple of things in here that, that are cool. It's like whenever you encounter certain things, you roll like their mood. So in, in the case of like they all have like mood tables. Uh, it's something they took from Troika, which is really cool. It was another really cool game we got to play. Uh, but like I'll say, I mean, just to, to pull the curtain back, like when I rolled the for that they were panicked and so that's why i was like when you first showed up everything was okay but then, uh, everyone else, then they started panicking because they saw all these extra people uh, so that's yeah. kind of the idea i was going with for that um but all right let's uh long's gotta go so let's go ahead and close this down for this uh this evening uh we are adventures and lollygagging again for those of you who hung out in the channel a couple of you gave some bits thank you very much for that uh if you're watching this later on youtube we appreciate that as well we play all sorts of different games uh, on our channel, but also on some others, including Free League Publishing, which you can catch us this coming Monday. Uh, Melissa and I will be there at 9 Central as we continue our VASIN campaign on the official Free League channel. Uh, and then you can catch us on every other Monday playing Alien. Next week, we're going to play something else. Uh, haven't decided yet. We'll probably chat for a minute after we get off this call to figure out what we want to play. Uh, we got plenty of games over on our YouTube channel where we've played like Those Dark Places, we've played Alien, we've played Heart, we've played uh, Electric Bastion, a lot of fun little games uh, to check out. So um, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and put us on the end screen and I'm going to find us somebody to raid. If you want to hang out for a minute, we're going to find some other cool people who are playing cool role playing games. So thanks for watching. The five of you, thank you for playing. And we'll see you in a couple days. So. Uh, Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>